Hello everyone and welcome to our series of explanation videos where today I will be speaking a bit about the upcoming EU battery regulation. So what is the EU battery regulation about? Well, basically as part of the announced EU Green Deal and the proposed strategic action plan of batteries, back in December 2020, the EU has announced a new upcoming regulation on batteries. Now this was mostly driven by the intensive progress and development in the battery industry, as well as the focus towards clean energy effort, especially the rise of the concept for electric vehicles. So, in terms of what this regulation contains, it, it is actually a very comprehensive document and framework, which aims to address the whole life cycle of the batteries from its inception until its end of life. Now, this is done mostly because of three reasons. First of all, to strengthen the internal functioning of the EU market. Secondly, to make sure there is circularity involved during the process of creation of batteries. And thirdly, to measure the environmental and social impacts that are created during the life cycle of each battery that is put on the market. So, in that sense, the regulation proposes a new set of requirements especially on the sustainability and safety, as well as on the information marking and labeling of batteries. What this means, companies placing batteries on the market, or as they are called, economic operators, would need to include these different sustainability and safety requirements in the form of due diligence reports, carbon footprint declarations, and so on, and make sure they have enough knowledge from their supply chain so that they can um, introduce these requirements in their reportings in order to be compliant. The proposed text come with a set of new requirements which were not part of the previous batteries directive. In that sense, I will mention two of them with some of their components. First, the sustainability and safety requirements which means companies would need to include details on the carbon footprint declaration of the batteries, the due diligence details in the form of annual reports, as well as details such as minimum recycle content and performance and durability parameters. When it comes to the information marking and labeling details, the changes include separate records for batteries in a digital format and in a label format, which is applicable um, to all five different categories of batteries placed on the EU markets. For three of these types of categories, specifically the electric vehicle batteries, the industrial storage batteries with internal storage about two kilowatts per hour, and the light means of transport batteries, there should be a separate record called the battery passport. The battery passport, as such, need to contain information about the whole life cycle of the battery and should be accessible via a unique inter identifier in the form of QR code. As it is a very complex supply chain and there is a lot of information and data included, companies would need to engage in collaboration mode with their suppliers, map their supply chains in order to be able to present and get all these details. What this means is this will encourage also more collaboration within the sector with the end economic operators placing the battery on the market and creating these battery passport records, having to get more details from their either cell modular pack operators or end of life operators after the battery ends um, its usage cycle. Two levels of information should be a part of a battery passport. First of all, the battery model data, which is static data. And secondly, the individual battery usage data or the dynamic data. When it comes to the battery model data, the requirements here would include the basic details, such as the country of origin and the manufacturer details, information about the specific battery performance and durability parameters, the sustainability and safety requirements, including the due diligence obligation and the waste treatment details about the batteries. When it comes to the dynamic set of data, this section would include the state of health and state of charge data, as well as the battery status. And usually this is information that would come in a read-only mode from a battery management system. 
The idea here is that um, with the information, which should be accessible via the QR code in different types of data sharing options, either public or private, the concerned users or the end of life operators would be able to make more informed decision about treating or um, um, using the battery, as well as with that contribute to a more circular concept and make sure that the batteries are used in the most efficient way. Over time, this will create a basis for benchmarking between different companies or suppliers and in the end create for a more competitive market. So basically, company working with batteries in the form of battery manufacturers, automotive OEMs, distributors or importers placing the batteries directly on the EU market would be directly impacted by the regulation, meaning they would need to be compliant with the applicable requirements for them, with the rest of the battery supply chain participants being indirectly affected. What this means is actually that for some of the specific requirements, such as the annual due diligence reporting or the carbon footprint calculations, in order for a directly affected company to fulfill this criterion, they would need to have information from their whole supply chain, including the very upstream supply chain ports. So when it comes to the specific annual due diligence obligation, companies here would need to declare the state of origin of the material, uh, the market transactions, as well as the percentage in which amount this material is contained in the end battery. Now, even though this is applicable only for four critical minerals as part of the regulation for lithium, nickel, cobalt, and natural graphite, it would still mean that directly affected companies would need to do careful supply chain mapping or introduce chain of custody or traceability systems in order to be capable to capture all this information. On the long term, what this means is that companies would need to engage in a more collaborative approach with their suppliers. And with the recent challenges we're seeing of downstream companies um, providing this information or doing supply chain mapping, it is normal to see moves such as strategic acquisitions or partnerships not only for securing the raw material supplies, but also for ensuring there is a more reliable network and that companies at the end would be able to gather the needed data. The first step to ensuring compliance is creating awareness, being able to dive deep into the regulation and its requirement. The second step we would say is the uh, regulation readiness assessment. This is a part where companies would be able to compare what the regulation prescribes and what they have or what's their current status quo. By being able to identify the gaps or the discrepancies they might have uh, in between the requirements and the current set of data, they would be able to figure out a roadmap or an action plan that can lead them to satisfying all these details and requirements. As the battery regulation is still not officially and fully adopted and all of these different requirements are going to be introduced gradually over the next period, having this action plan or roadmap will enable companies to be on time and gather the needed data. For example, we've seen that there are a lot of challenges in terms of supply chain information. So in this case, through the gap analysis, companies would be able to timely reorganize their supply chains or figure out different communication methods so that they would be able to obtain the needed information. In that sense, once the gaps are identified and rectified over time, the next logical step would be for companies to pilot or test the digital solutions such as the battery passport. This comes because of mostly company functioning in these sectors would have different legacy systems that they might use for their production lines or for their enterprise resource planning uh, activities. That is why making sure as a first step a test or a battery passport pilot is done, you would be able to identify any potential integration additional requirements or needs in order to make sure the newly prescribed technological solutions can fit well within your organizational context. Once these three steps are done, 
then companies would have more information about how they can reorganize or adjust their organizational flows and make sure they are staying um, compliant with what is prescribed. This is one of the reasons why at MindSpider we have organized or launched a battery regulation readiness assessment, seeing that companies tend to struggle with understanding the certain requirements and how those will affect it. So overall, taking a proactive approach and getting familiar with the regulation details, how it fits with your environment and testing the actual solutions will not only provide a, a concept for compliance, but also you will learn more about your supply chain and be able to act timely on what is to be enforced as regulatory requirements.